Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today I'm going to cover the Fallschirmjäger, and they were the elite airborne troops of the German army during the Second World War. Now where they differed from the likes of the American and British airborne is that these guys were actually Luftwaffe troops, meaning that they were part, essentially, of the Air Force. Now while they were successful in their campaign in Crete, the losses suffered there made sure that Hitler decided they were never again going to be dropped en masse like they were then. So they would essentially form an elite infantry corps for the rest of the war. Now they would fight on every front. So whether you are painting a unit for Italy or for the European campaign, really you can't go wrong with having some Fallschirmjäger in your army. So all the paints will be listed in the description below. Without any further mucking around, let's get started. So in order to prime this fella, I've used the army painter's skeleton bone. And this is a little lighter and a little bit more rich in color uh, than I would normally suggest. But because we're going to shade this later, I think this is going to work just fine. If you do want to use a more accurate color here, then once you've primed him, you could hit his smock with some German camo beige and just work from there. But I think we can save ourselves the time. Now I've got here German camo medium brown. And the interesting thing about Splittermuster, which is the camo that we're going to be painting, is that it had quite geometric shapes. Uh, things were quite hard-edged rather than sort of blotchy that you'd normally associate with camo. So what I'm going to do is just paint little sort of triangles and blotches. And you can be fairly random with how you approach this. Uh, Splitter Muster tended to have a lot of sort of empty space. So rather than, you know, essentially trying to fill this whole smock with an equal amount of brown and beige, you'll find instead that there's quite a lot more beige visible still. Areas that you struggle to reach with your brush, don't worry too much if you're not uh, getting those perfectly, but I'm just describing weird blotchy triangles, essentially. Now another weird thing about these is that they tended to run almost horizontally. So you'll get some longer areas where you want to essentially draw a line and then just blotch it up a bit. So I'm going to go around the whole smock and we'll see what we have once I'm finished making my weird geometric patterns. Now after a couple of trips around his smock, you'll have something that looks like this. You'll see that after I've done the bigger shapes, I've come back and just added little V's and cross marks and what have you. If you want to do the earlier version of the smock, just use slightly less brown. The shapes aren't perfect, but they're close enough. And remember, we aren't looking for perfect, because if our camouflage works at this scale, we're going to lose details on the miniature. Now you'll see this bright green lurking back here, and this is German camo bright green. And we're going to paint some real bright green onto this dude. This, we want to sort of nestle up quite close against these areas of brown. And we're doing a similar sort of thing of just little odd geometric shapes. Gosh, that's bright. That's so bright. <laughs> Anyhow, what we're going to do now, there is less green by a pretty wide margin compared to the brown on these guys. So just pick a few areas to essentially overlap some of the brown a little. You can use this as kind of a tidy up stage here. Uh, we're going to go around the miniature, and if you need to, I quite, you know, I like using the uh, Google, you know, Google Images tab for a couple of quick looks at inspiration and what sort of shapes I'm looking for. But what I'm doing is just going to finish this off, then we'll come back and have a look once our green, our bright, bright green is on this guy. Now that's the general shape of our camo smock laid out. But what we're going to do now, in this stage, man, this is optional. Because at this kind of scale, it's not hugely going to matter. But you may have seen the raindrop pattern on these smocks. So what I've done is watered down my uh, bright green just a little more. Because I don't want the coverage on this to be amazing. I've got a really fine brush. And what I'm going to start doing, it's easiest, I find, if you sort of flick just lightly, oh goodness, across... You know, the edge of your cork or whatever you're painting on to see 
what kind of effect you're going to leave behind. So with just a tiny bit of paint on your brush, I'm going to start by flicking little light green lines, oh goodness, just across the beige areas as much as possible. Try dodging the brown when you do this. And bear in mind that when you come to the edge of a, a sleeve or something, the direction of the rain pattern is going to change. Now after a couple of passes around like that, we'll have that raindrop effect. It's one which is easy to go overboard, but also one where you need to add maybe a little more than you might expect. The real trick here is keeping your paint thin. Thinner lines are going to show up that little less and I think it's much easier to tidy them up if we need to. There are one or two spots where I'm going to come back with some skeleton bone later and fix those, but I'm not too worried about it now. As always, save your cleanup for last. I've got now some Cadian Flesh Tone from Citadel, and honestly any skin color you want here, all I'm going to do is coat in his hands and his face. Now because these men were actually Luftwaffe troops, they weren't ordinary ground troops, they would take every opportunity they could to wear their, you know, distinguishing features. Now, Luftwaffe uniform was a sort of grey-blue, so in the same way that Falgrau was grey-green, Luftwaffe blue was grey-blue, funnily enough. Now, I don't actually have the Vallejo color Luftwaffe uniform. Uh, if you can get your hands on it, of course, and you want to paint a large number of these guys, that's going to be a lot easier. But I've mixed in here just a little bit of Cantor Blue into some Mechanica Standard Grey, and that's going to work fine. So with my Grey-Blue mix here, I'm going to paint in his cap. Um, now it would not be incorrect to actually paint this in Field Grey, uh, so that green-grey colour we normally associate with German ground forces. Um, quite regularly they'd end up with those. His trousers in particular, they are going to be that colour anyway, but I figure for his cap spend a little bit of effort and make it that right color. Now at the same time I'm also going to paint in this uh, gas mask cape here because this would have been a very similar blue. You'll get some <laughs> debate is the word I guess I'm going to use over whether or not their helmets were blue. Now I tend to think and most of the information I found suggests that they would have been the same color as you know, normal ground forces. They didn't have blue helmets. Uh, but if you are painting helmet covers, they would have been the same splitter tarn that we've just painted. Now, from here on in, it's actually not too different to painting an ordinary German soldier. A lot of this gear was standardized after all. So I've got here German field grey, and we're going to paint his trousers in these. And this will probably take two coats to get a nice solid color over bone, but if you're lucky, you might find that it actually works out to your advantage and you only have to do one, but I'll let you be the judge of that. Now I actually found it quite funny painting the field grey next to the really bright green, because ordinarily it looks, you know, field grey looks quite green, but now it looks a lot more grey by comparison. It's just funny how your eye tricks you like that. I'm going to paint his bread bag in next, and I'm using khaki for this. Now this would be quite a faded kind of colour for these bread bags but uh, it's going to go a little bit more green when we shade it. Now for any details like leather ammunition pouches, his belt, and the strap on his rifle, I'm using German Camo Black Brown. Uh, this is a really dark brown, and it's perfect for leather. Like German leather was almost black. This is probably even a little too bright. Uh, but again, once we shade it, it will look the business. Now, as well as the leather, you'll generally find that's a really useful color just to do that little splash of hair you can see at the back of his head. Up to you, of course. Sometimes you'll just black that in. I've got now beige brown, and we're going to paint in his rifle. You can really use any color that you think looks best for the wood here. Um, I just like beige brown. And I'm going to paint in basically the whole rifle. I don't care if I hit parts that are going to be black later. And at the same time, if you want to save a color, you can just paint the felt on his uh, water bottle in beige brown too. If you want to be more accurate, you could use uh, flat earth, but I don't care. It's a water bottle. Now for this roll on the back of his pouch here, I'm going to use US dark green, although any sort of mid-tone brown, sorry, mid-tone green rather, 
will work perfectly well here. And then afterwards comes the fun part of blacking in those last few details that we haven't really touched. So his boots, uh, the top of his water bottle and the strap that runs underneath it, parts of his weapon of course. This part is really just finding the last few details to paint. And then finally just a little bit of Vallejo off-white to paint in the eagle on his cap. And you know what, I'm going to do this off camera. <laughs> Now at this stage, any last minute tidy up that you need to do, you want to do that now. Um, I actually lost the areas on his coat that I wanted to um, to tidy up, so I can only assume it's really good camo. <laughs> I'm hoping that looks right. Um, I've given some Agrax Earthshade here a really good shake, and I'm going to apply this with a deafeningly large brush. Deafeningly? Oh, it doesn't matter. Anyhow, let's just start chucking this over the whole miniature. And you'll see straight away how this is going to darken down that smock. Make sure that you are working fairly quickly and get it into all of the recesses. But once you've got that covered, we're going to leave this for about 20 to 30 minutes to dry. If you're lucky enough to have a really sunny spot, it might be a little quicker. Now isn't that just magic? I love it. Uh, the really cool thing is how much it dulls down that uh, skeleton bone that we used, and it now looks a much more reasonable, you know, camo beige. In addition, it sort of ties together the raindrop effect that we've put on there, and that works brilliantly. Now, how you want to highlight this fella is really up to you, um, if you do or not, to be perfectly honest. There's not a reason that you couldn't just base him up and put him on the table now. However, I'm going to grab some of my uh, Feldgrau that's still on the on the palette, and I'm just going to brighten up his trousers a little bit because I think that this is one of those areas of detail where it's going to benefit from just a slightly brighter finish to set it off against the uh, the smock. Now into my blue mix from earlier, I've added just a little dot of Administratum Grey, and honestly, any light grey will work, even if you are using the essentially correct Vallejo color. Just a wee dot of grey will do the job. So I'm going to highlight around the edge of his cap here. Now I do think highlighting a face will ordinarily elevate the miniature quite a bit, even if it's very simple. So I've got here just some kids left flesh, and I'm going to paint just the tip of his nose, tops of his cheekbones, and we'll do his chin with this as well. Now make sure you just pop off the backs of his knuckles with that as well. Now I've got some of the model metallic air. Uh, this is still a Vallejo color, but this is from their air paint range, and I figure it works just as well off of a brush. This is gunmetal, and I am going to highlight just a couple of areas where I want, funnily enough, the gunmetal <laughs> to look shiny. Now at the same time, once I've done this, I'm going to flick around to the canister on his back here, and instead of highlighting this with the real sharp blue, I'm just going to Paint a few little tiny lines of gunmetal to make it look like it's been a bit dinged around. Now while we aren't going to highlight the green and brown on the jacket, I do want to use a little bit of skeleton bone just to highlight the extreme edges of some of the uh, pale white sections. Just so that those areas of detail stand out a little bit more from around the rest of the jacket. So be a little sparing with this. And it is like I tend to mention, purely optional, uh, but I think I'm just going to use this to edge in some of the areas I want to stand out a little bit more from their surroundings. Now as with Grenadiers, you could turn around and highlight the edges of his trousers with a little bit of green-grey if you really want them to stand out, but I think the star of the show is going to be his smock. You know, he's a Fallschirmjäger, that's what stands out. So what I'm going to do now is go hit him with a matte varnish. I'm going to use the Vallejo matte spray. Then I'll go ahead and pop a base on him, and we'll see what we get. And there we have it. Our Fallschirmjäger is complete. Now this, to me, sort of hits the sweet spot between it looks all right, you know, it looks pretty good, I think, uh, and is quick enough to do that you could get through a platoon of them without losing your mind. The camo is really more impressionist than perfectly accurate, but I think it's pretty close. And from here, you really could go to town. If you wanted to sort of knock it up a little bit further, 
you know, highlight the trousers, highlight his skin a slightly different way. It's up to you. So thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including producers Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Trainboy, and Fred. Your support is invaluable, folks. So any questions, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Facebook are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time. Let's just spin around one last time. Yeah. And you all enjoy the rest of your day.